Uh, okay, we've Is cut the pieces. Yes, yes. Do you use a shelf hinge? No. No. Which one? I, I, I use. I use a. It, it's a. It's a jig I got from um, Lee, Valley. Lee Valley, and it and it and it's in there. There's a cutting the biscuits. Has anybody used a biscuit joiner? Yeah. yeah, they're a great piece of kit. They really are. It just it takes time to for it to glue up and set up and get it perfect. And uh, that's why I really I followed Chris's lead there when he came in. And he was talking to us about the, the Craig pocket hole system and. And as you can see, I've used a couple of pocket holes, but it really does the trick when it comes to putting these things together. I use glue and the pocket holes at the same time, and it really does a great job. Do you have the adjustable shelf jig there, Chris? That was pretty good. Yeah, you did. Was it? Yeah. Oh, I'm doing that. That's doing the, uh, the doors. These, there you go. Um, I, what happens here, let me stand over here, it's easier that way. You have to make your holes drilled right in here. And this hole here has to be the same height and level as this hole over here, as the same as this one, as this one, because if you don't, then your shelf looks like this. So what you have to do, and as I say, this is a, a jig I bought from uh, Lee Valley a number of years ago, and it, it works terrific for me. You can, some people have got a piece of wood, and they drill holes, and they line it up. This works for me, and I have no regrets buying it. The thing you have to measure is, you measure over from here into here to make sure your holes are lined up in the same place. I measure over an inch to the, to the, to the size of the J, side of the J. You can measure over an inch and a half, you can measure two inches, you can do whatever the hell you want. But I mean, it just has to be uniform. The part that's really important, I measure from the end up to here, and this one here was three inches. Once you measure here at one inch, here three inches, the very next thing I do is I write it down on, a, on the damn board here, and I write down with three inches and one inch. I have this jig here, it fits in one of these holes, and you have to remember you want to start at the sixth hole up, or the fifth hole up, or the third hole up, because again, you can have holes that are staggered. So we start drilling a hole all the way through. I release this here, I slide it across, I make sure this is again one inch from the end this side, it's again three inches from here, I drill the other hole, and all those holes are lined up and they're straight. And once you finish this, do this side, then you have to swing around and do the same thing on this side so it lines up perfect. It's a, it's a good kit, works for me. This would take me maybe 20 minutes to do both of them together. Using a hand power drill? Yes. That, yeah. That red thing? I'm sorry? That, that little red jig was on there. That, that, okay, that. Yes, that's that hole. Your drill goes, this is your drill with the slot, and it goes right in that jig that fits right on top of here. <coughs> Yes, my wife likes that. Yes, you got that right. So, so once you have all that built and it's finished, now you have to assemble. Again, you've paid attention, which is your good size. Now, this is the side, I, I think I was telling you. I have one cabinet that goes up against the wall over top of the dryer. Another cabinet that sandwiches right beside <coughs> it over top of the washing machine. This one sandwiches beside it over top of the sink. This side here, because it's sandwiched against my, my cabinet over here, nobody's going to see it, so it doesn't matter how I do this. And I glue this, and, I, and be honest with you, one of the ways I've done it before, I could cut a little plug, glue it, whoosh, pop it in here, and you use, does everybody have the, you've all seen these saws, right? Flush cutting saws, smooth, they won't damage, and you just cut off the plug, and it will do the right trick. But because nobody's going to see this, I just sandwich against it. When I go staining this, I'll be staining this next week. I'll stain from here, and I won't even bother with this. I'll stain from here, I won't bother with this. This is the money side. This is the side that my wife sees when she walks in the door every day. So I'll make sure this side is really pretty, okay? Yeah, and you're going to be staying in the inside and all that. So that's my cabinet. 
I put it together. I usually do the, the joints with the pocket holes up here first. Then I do a pocket hole. <coughs> then I do the, the butt end here. Turn it like this on end. This is the biscuit. I'll glue one side, I'll glue the other side. I'll slide it in tight. Turn it upside down, I'll do the pocket hole, and then I'm finished. Um, before I do that, though, I'll do the pocket hole for the hanger first to this one, and first to this one. And then all your cabinets put together, and just a little bit of sanding and cleaning. But if it's done properly, and everybody knows, well, not everybody, this is the thing you're looking at right here. You want to make sure it's square, and you don't want to, don't kill yourself if it's not completely square, because don't forget when it goes up on the wall, you're going to be attaching and everything else, but it should be the same size this way as it is this way, and so you check for square, and if it's put together and it's quite square before it dries up, get a clamp and just from here to here, and you'll get it square. Yeah, and I do have it on the top here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Just one question. So that, uh, I don't know if this is any of my Particle so board. Like three and, quarter inch, yeah. it's okay. Yeah. Half inch, it's, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's essential. And I, the other thing you have to remember is no, I've never had any lessons. Nobody's taught me how to do it. This is Wayne Pete and doing a cabinet. And, and, and if I've done it right or wrong, and, yeah, and it's, but Looks good the, my bride thinks it's nice. So that's why we have to stay there. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. About that as a rule, I'll compensate when it gets upon the wall as well, because it has to be straight and true and level. One has to be attached to the other one, and you want to make sure they're all level and plain and up and all that. Now the next thing is doing the doors. Um, here's a door that I've done. Oh, sort of, sort of, you know, I'll, I'll leave that one in there as well. Um, the, my wife likes the shaker style, so apparently I'm making shaker style. Uh, it, it, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, this is off of one of the cupboards that I've already made. And the shaker style is basically flat. There's no sort of like no raised panel. And generally it's, it's chamfered on the edges a little bit to make it look nice. You know, as I, I said to somebody the last time I brought a door in here, the, the way I've done this, and if you, you show the picture on... On the router? Yep. Well, that's the wood. When I first get it, the very first thing I do is I, I chamfer off the edges. What I've done for myself, I've made my own little router table. And uh, I basically see the screws here. My workshop is there, and I just <laughs> burp, burp, burp the screw right in. That's all this can be. Can you spell that? <laughs> And th this is how I use it right there. And I have a chamfer bit in there, and it just cleans off the edge, and it really does a sort of a neat little job. Yeah. And now I have another picture there showing me do. Okay, see here. Um, years ago, when I did that, I actually used the table saw. To, I use the table saw to cut that groove that you're seeing. And I'm using the rotor table, which is the same rotor table as this here, with the exception of a fence on the back. And I've had it for a while, it works pretty good. This is the groove cutter I use right here. Just a straight little, yeah. Wayne, is that where you wipe the glue off? Oh, oh yeah, it's my pants. Oh yeah, those, those are worker pants, those are. <laughs> I think it would probably go into Peacock when it with those things, you know. So, but, but this is what I have a half inch router underneath, and I just cut the groove and I go all the way along. And uh, that's this piece of wood right here. I just cut a groove. Then, once that's done, I, I cut myself some little, little biscuits of sorts. And I just slide it right in the center here like that. And 
and that was going around is what I done. This poplar, the only reason I use poplar is because um, it's not too expensive. It's a semi hardwood and it's not a bad wood to work with. And I just picked it up for the for here tonight. So that's bait No, it's, it, it's poplar. <laughs> poplar is a as a it's a semi hardwood. It's the softest hardwood. Yes, and, and it's the nice. It is it's good for painting. Though. It really is. Paint rate is something different. Um, th this is more expensive. Um, I thought you guys were worse. Uh, but, but, but this is just to show you how it works. And it's just a, and I'll tell you, unless you, we all have kids, I guess, are ambitious and stuff, but as a rule, you, you mount those and you have no problems. Um, you'll also see on the back there, you show, there's one there when I did the drill press, I think, as well. See the drill press, there you go, right now. Oh, there you go. It's a, a 35 millimeter drill press, a, a bit, a foster bit. Uh, you're five millimeters from the edge. I, I've already, I have a, a, a preset uh, stop. So when I'm doing my doors, and when I go to do my next set of cabinets, I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I'll have eight doors I'm doing all at the same time. And, and so I'll preset all the doors, I'll go in, cut, 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 change my bit to the other side, do it again, and do it fairly fast, fairly quick. Um, these are the European style hinges. When I'm going to attach that, I basically take this thing, I put it up on end, I put it flat like this, this piece of wood here, your, your style there, rails and styles, long ones, short ones. I make it so this piece of wood here, is the same height as that. Okay, that's how I make it with the European style. European style, basically, you don't see the frame. As far as the width goes, there's a real secret, real simple way of, of, of measuring. Um, if you want to know, let's say your cabinet is going to be um, <coughs> 16 inches wide. And so the door, you want it to match that 16 inches. Usually I leave a, a 16th inch relief on one side and a 16th relief